Hi everyone, my name is Brittany Gandel and I am the graduate advisor for emergency management and security management. And I will be here today to help guide you through uh, part of this PowerPoint. And also with us today, uh, we have Dr. Wallace and Dr. Rouse, and I will let them jump in and introduce themselves. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Hi, sorry about that. Um, I, I have to do this on my phone because I have a, a problem with my computer today. Uh, so I'm Michael Wallace. I'm the director of the Emergency and Security Studies Program. I've been at Tulane eight years. It's hard to believe. And I'm a retired military intelligence officer. I spent 20 years in the Navy, uh, did a lot of different uh, jobs in the Navy. Um, but uh, to tell you the truth, this is the best job I could ever have. Uh, it's great teaching and also preparing the next generation of Homeland Security and emergency management professionals for their careers. And I'll turn it over to my colleague, Dr. Rouse. Hey, everybody. I'm Becky Rouse. Um, I do know at least one of you. I see cookies on the line here today. So and I would look forward to meeting rest of you as well. Um, I'm retired U.S. Army, the superior fighting force, I might just add. Um, I, among the things I did, I was a military police officer, got to do all the cool stuff that MPs get to do in the course of 22 years, but I also got to teach at West Point, got to go to graduate school for political science, and I got to, got to write speeches for combat commanders. And if you don't know who those guys are, and they're all guys at the time, um, they are the four star general officers or flag officers who uh, oversee a whole part of the planet because the US of course has divided the planet up into areas of responsibility. I say all that because that's what got me into Homeland Security and Homeland Defense. And then before I came to Tulane full time, I actually was with FEMA for over a year, about 18 months. Um, and that's what got me into emergency management. Uh, so I like to think I have a breadth of uh, knowledge on all of topics uh, related to the programs that we offer. Take it away. So we'll just jump right into this. The Homeland Security field uh, is actually not that old when you compare it to different other disciplines. Uh, after 2001, the attacks on 9-11, uh, Homeland Security was, was stood up as a department uh, and for a few years, it was seen as, as keeping the, the homeland safe, and that the homeland being the United States, from terrorist attack. And then we had this event in 2005 called Hurricane Katrina, and that changed the focus of homeland security from being just a man-made, looking at man-made possible disasters to all hazards. So whether it be man-made or natural and so that's where we are today. We have uh, an agency, Department of Homeland Security, uh, that makes up the majority of Homeland Security, but then we also have many different agencies at the, at the local, state, and federal level that also have something to do with Homeland Security, Homeland Defense, and Emergency Management. And you can see there in that one, the third bullet down that Homeland Security actually includes many, many, many different parts. Emergency Management is, is a major part of that. Uh, but critical infrastructure, you know, taking away power, uh, taking away water, food from a population. Uh, we saw that here in New Orleans last year with Hurricane Ida. It, it took, took down all of our electrical grid uh, for at least a, a couple of weeks. Um, you know, that's critical. And protection of that is something that is, is very important. But it also includes cyber security, intelligence, counterterrorism, uh, and then border security. Next, please. I'll let uh, Dr. Rouse take this one. Okay, um, I, I love this first line. Emergency managers manage emergencies. They also manage crises, catastrophic events, disasters, uh, and they also manage day-to-day -day operations, um, often in a community or for a manufacturing plant, for a um, Amazon for for the hospital, for the school district, and so on. Every single entity, every entity, the guy you went to to get gas from on your way to school, the last time you drove to school, um, that is part of a larger network that has emergency managers overseeing kind of how the operations run to keep folks safe, healthy, happy, 
productive and uh, uh, successful. Um, of course, these the emergency managers are a critical component of the entire leadership of a community, um, often the mayor or the governor's right-hand person um, in, in public service. But of course, in, in non-governmental service, there's probably even more emergency managers, uh, whether they're called safety and health or, or security management, they are all related to managing those uh, crises before when they occur. I'm getting a little distracted looking at where folks are, are from and they're telling us in the chat, if anybody wants to take a look at that when it's your chance. Okay, that's all I got. Yeah, I was looking at the person from Oregon, you know, rub it in, uh, we're melting down here. Uh, so turning to security management. So security management looks at the private sector as Dr. Rouse was saying, you know, emergency management touches a lot of different parts, uh, both the public side and the private side. And security management is focused on the private side of, of industry. So uh, companies are very worried about keeping their data safe, keeping their employees safe uh, against both man-made and natural disasters. Business continuity is very important. Again, uh, during Hurricane Ida last year, a lot of businesses uh, had to relocate uh, because we didn't have power. So did they have plans to do that? And that's where emergency management and homeland security and security management kind of all tie in. You have to know a little bit about each field to be a really effective uh, homeland security leader. Um, so security management, again, more focused towards private industry here in Louisiana. Uh, we have a lot of chemical and uh, petroleum uh, fields. We have uh, a nuclear reactor down here. We also have the Louisiana offshore oil platform, those are all private en entities. And, you know, you take one of those out that uh, can lead to a lot of bad things happening. We also have the Port of Louisiana down here, uh, depending on how you, uh, you kind of count ports and, and how many ships come in and out. Uh, some people in Louisiana say we have the largest port in the country. Uh, other people say Long Beach is, but uh, the, the Mississippi River and the ports uh, that service the, the Mississippi uh, make up a huge part of what keeps the United States moving. Next slide, please. So both Dr. Ross and I have been talking about this. Where can you find these emergency and security professionals everywhere? Uh, I mentioned before, you have these people located at every single level of government. So starting with the city, the county, the parish, all the way up to the federal government, each state has emergency management and homeland security. Sometimes they're co-located like the state of Louisiana. Sometimes they're separate like the state of Mississippi it has two different agencies, one for emergency management, one for homeland security. Uh, and then the public, uh, I'm sorry, the private sector is huge. Uh, you know, one of the largest growing areas in uh, private security management are hospitals. Uh, hospitals do almost everything uh, that you think of for homeland security and emergency preparedness. You know, they have to worry, be worried about uh, emergencies. Uh, they have to be worried about critical infrastructure. They have to keep their uh, patient records safe. So, uh, you know, they have to know about computer systems and firewalls and all that good stuff. Uh, and then they have to be worried about, uh, you know, active shooters and, and other things like that. So you, like Dr. Ross said again, she's wonderful. I should just let her do all this. Um, anywhere you turn from the gas station to the supermarket to to all these different things that you take for granted has something to do with either Homeland Security, security management or emergency management. Next slide. So we're gonna go into the different degrees that make up our, our program, emergency and security studies. Uh, we do have a bachelor's in Homeland Security Studies. It's a, it's a typical undergrad degree of 120 credits uh, with 30 of those being your major. And so, with your major, you have some prescribed courses. You have nine prescribed courses, and you can see some of these here, intelligence, counterterrorism, emergency management. Again, those are the basic courses that everyone needs to be familiar with to be effective in this career field. But then we also have uh, courses that allow you to kind of specialize. If you're interested in, in geospatial information systems, or if you're interested in open source intelligence, or if you're interested in other things, uh, human intelligence, uh, we have courses in that that you can take. Um, and you can also have the opportunity if you if you start one of our undergrad programs of doing an accelerated master's program 
And what that means is before your senior year, uh, you apply for our graduate program. And if you're accepted into the graduate program, you're allowed to take two graduate courses your senior year. And, uh, and then when you graduate from your undergrad, you move right into the graduate program. So you get to take two graduate courses account for both undergrad and grad. And by the way, those graduate courses are at the undergrad tuition rate. And then you get to go right into the graduate program and, and complete it in a shorter amount of time. Next slide, please. We also have graduate certificates and, and these are for people who already have uh, a bachelor's degree but are interested in uh, getting a graduate certificate in one of our, the areas that we offer. And right now you can see uh, the different areas right there, intelligence, security management, emergency management, uh, secu sports security, and open source intelligence. I'm kind of biased towards open source intelligence because that is our brand new one. It's going to uh, have four classes and it's going to go over, you know, what is open source intelligence? Where can you find it? It's going to have an ethics part to it. And then it's actually going to show you how to get this information off the deep web, not the dark web, but the deep web and then how to analyze this information and turn into usable intelligence. Um, all of the graduate certificates are 12 hours and they're stackable. So that means that you can start one of these graduate certificates, obtain one of these graduate certificates, and then if you decide to come back and do the master's program, you can move those credits into and, and they will count for your master's degree. It's the same process as applying for the graduate program. Uh, so uh, we'll go into that in just a second. We also have the post back certificate, and this is a, a, also for people who have their bachelor's degrees. Um, if you got your bachelor's degree and let's say a, a, another area and you're interested in Homeland Security and emergency management, you can take these classes and it'll give you a good basis to enter the field. Next slide. So the Masters in Homeland Security Studies, this has been around since 2009. Um, we've been very, very successful with this program, uh, mainly because we used experts in the field to design it. So we actually went out to, to leaders in the field and said, if, if you could have a graduate, if you could design a graduate, what kind of skills and what kind of knowledge do they need to know? And from that, we built this degree and we also built our other degrees doing that. So you have uh, seven core courses, and that includes a capstone, and then you have four electives. So you have 11 courses, 33 hours for this degree. Um, but the electives allow you to do a couple of other things. So the core courses give you that, that good foundation, but then the electives allow you to either um, take classes that you're interested in, that you want to you know, really dive into, or you can do one of the certificates or concentrations. So the the graduate certificates I talked about on the prior page, you can do one and have it count for both a certificate and towards your master's degree. So you kind of get two for one. We have a, we do have a concentration in cybersecurity, uh, which again is very important to Homeland Security. Having a knowledge of, of cybersecurity uh, doesn't mean you're going to be writing code, but to have that understanding of the threats and what you can do to prevent some of these threats is very important. And then you can see the courses below. And we're always adding courses, new courses to this. Uh, some of our newer ones are narco-terrorism, which is taught by uh, a retired senior leader in the DEA. Uh, we have a human intelligence course. It's taught by a former CIA case officer. Uh, we have law and national security. It's taught by a lawyer here that works for Transportation Safety Administration, Security Administration, sorry, um, and, and other ones. And so we are adding new courses. Um, which uh, are very well received by students. Next slide, please. And then security management. Again, more focused toward private industry. So while you have some, some classes that are similar across all three, especially, especially emergency management, um, you also have specific courses towards security management. And these include physical and infrastructure protection system. A uh, gentleman who teaches that used to be uh, in charge of security for a nuclear power plant uh, in the Savannah River nuclear power plant. Uh, we have uh, corporate security, which is taught by uh, somebody who has done this many years for uh, one of the oil companies down here. Uh, business continuity, again, during IDA, it showed us that businesses need a plan 
in case you don't have basic services. Uh, you need to get your, your business up and running. Uh, how, do you, how do you account for all your employees? You know, these are things that businesses need to think about. Uh, we also have an ethics course because uh, ethics is very important in this field. And then uh, again, cyber, I can't stress enough how important cyber is. Uh, the big three right now for ransomware are hospitals, lawyers, and CPAs. Because if you uh, get that information, hold it for ransom, those businesses can't, can't do anything. Next slide, please. And I'll take a break and let Dr. Rouse jump in. I just in. want to show you on this slide that we have five, five, and one. Remember, it was seven, four, and one. And what, We don't want you to memorize anything. We don't want you to think we're stuck in any kind of rut. In emergency management, you have five core courses, five electives, and then you have the capstone course as well. And the, by the way, shout out to those who are produce some truly amazing capstone courses. We have a person who's been working with these students for years and it's a terrific program. Some of these students are now this year planning to go and make presentations at a conference on what they've uh, uh, put together for their final course. Capstone, if, you, if you're comparing programs across the country, if you will, Dr. Wallace and I both attended, I actually, he went to Tulane for his master's. Um, I got mine at Syracuse, but you start to see different schools have thesis or they have comprehensive exams. Well, in our case, this being a practitioner-based program, all of these programs being this, uh, we bring it all home with a capstone project that the student designs. It doesn't have to be purely academic. It can also be um, um, something that you're contributing to an organization or contributing to a community and so on. Uh, in addition to that, I show you here a couple of the courses. What I like to talk about though is the five electives. You can take electives from any of the courses that you find in the catalog that are under Homeland Security, Security Management, or Emergency Management, or we have an agreement with the School of Public Health, and we are just getting into that starting in the, in the, in the future here, um, where we're going to work with them and offer some of their students uh, access to our courses, such as say disaster communications is a popular one. Um, and then we would be allowed, our students would be allowed to take some courses with them. Uh, the other thing I've seen is a student now and then says, I wanna take global politics or I wanna take you know, something else that, that wasn't necessarily part of our program. And that's been worked out through the university. And, and we have some terrific peers and folks we work with at school that are willing to do the kind of cross um, cross-pollination, if you will. Also, our public affairs folks, um, they also are, are more than happy to let students into uh, resource management class or, or things like this. Um, so I want you to think about that when you're looking and when you're thinking about programs and why this makes this a, a perhaps even more robust than what it might look like on a single slide. And potential career options. Um, we have been very fortunate in this program. We have graduates that have uh, gone on to jobs at the federal government level, at the uh, state level, at the local level. Uh, here in New Orleans, we have a, a number of graduates who are in uh, either Jefferson Parish, which is the, the parish right next to, to Orleans Parish, and also in Orleans Parish. Uh, we have uh, people who work for the Louisiana state government, but also different uh, states. We had one graduate that started with New Jersey about a month before uh, Sandy, and she was put in charge of updating their hurricane plans because um, she was from Louisiana and they thought, well, what the heck, you know, she knows all about hurricanes, let's put her in charge. And that was literally a month before Sandy. So she came, uh, she came out of the whole uh, situation uh, very highly thought of. We also have uh, a graduate that uh, started with the state of Oregon. Um, and then at the federal level, we've had uh, students with the Central Intelligence Agency, with DOD, with FBI. Um, we just in April had a, a career fair here in New Orleans uh, where we had CIA, FBI, Secret Service, uh, Naval Criminal Investigative Service. Um, I'm forgetting a couple. We also had the, the ATF, uh, Navy, Coast Guard. So uh, we... So government agencies realize that uh, our graduates are, are very well prepared for the field and they come to recruit here in New Orleans and at, and at Tulane. Um, but here are some of the, the careers that we've had, um, but uh, we've had a lot of great students who've gone on to great careers. 
And here are some more, as you can see, in security management and emergency management. I won't go over every one. Can but I just again, throw something in, Mike, while you're talking? Sure. Okay, in 2021, everyone remembers, everybody was alive then. Uh, we remember we had this pesky pandemic. We also had civil unrest. We had some social issues that were um, resulting in, in large scale protests and demonstrations and just kind of um, a lot of communication going on, if you will. We had a, um, we were going into an election season, which turned out to be quite a challenging one for many reasons. And we had more named storms than we had had in our recorded history in terms of hurricanes. All that going on um, it affected everything in our life, economics, uh, social, cultural, political environments, and every single thing that I named is related to security and emergency management. So even if you just think a new, and one thing you found that came out of this was businesses now say, I need a business continuity specialist. And if you think, well, I didn't, I'm not a business continuity specialist, but this is what we're telling you, you can be by the time you finish the program. Um, things, positions that didn't even exist, whole whole uh, career fields that developed during just that one period of time in our history. Um, and there's no expectation for that to be different in the future. Thanks. All right. So we also give credit for prior learning. Um, if you have, let's say you have military or um, uh, federal government's education or training, that's been evaluated by ACE, uh, which is the American Council on Education. Uh, you can apply that towards your, your graduate degree. Uh, you can also transfer in other credits from different schools up to nine hours for graduate degrees um, and bachelor's degrees a little different. But we do um, encourage people who uh, may have, again, training from the military or their jobs to look into this and talk to either the advisors or or Dr. Rouse or myself about getting this learning uh, into your degree. But I vote they talk to Brittany and that she get to say a few words on this one. Yeah, uh, credit for prior learning is a great opportunity for a lot of our students because a lot of students are coming to SOPA with years of experience in whatever field that they're you know coming to get an actual degree in. So if that is the case, if you've been you know, working in some in some realm of emergency management or security management, and you see a course that you know you think that you don't need credit for that because you you know you've put in 15 years in that in that field. That's something to have a conversation with us about to see if credit for prior learning would be a good uh, route for you to go. Um, military training, like Dr. Wallace said, any sort of professional training, we can you know look at having that credit applied to your degree. And I'll keep it going here. So student success and uh, support, student support and success. So as a Tulane student, uh, you will be assigned a couple of different people during your time here that will just kind of help you um, act as a, a support system. So um, you get a dedicated academic advisor, which would be either myself or Dan for the emergency and security studies programs. Um, you also are working with faculty that have industry experience. So these are faculty um, that work in this field. They've been in this field a long time. Um, so you've got that kind of at your fingertips, which is a, a great resource academically and professionally. Um, you have a network of program peers and other Tulane alumni. Um, so once you graduate, you're also um, put into our Tulane alumni network. So that connects you with, you know, job opportunities, just basic connections across the country and across the world for other, from other Tulane alumni. Um, and you also have a dedicated career advisor here at SOPA who can help you with kind of all things career. So mock interviews, building a resume, editing a resume, um, any general questions you have about where to start searching for jobs or, or anything of that nature, um, you do have a, an advisor for that as well. Um, and one other person who's not listed here is as a Tulane student or assigned a financial aid counselor. Um, so that person is here to offer any sort of advice on, on the financial side of paying for your education. Um, and that's at any point while you're a student here. So affordability, um, compared to a lot of programs, especially in the area, Tulane is, is pretty affordable. Um, so for tuition for fall, 
We've got undergraduates at 596 of credit and graduates at 1,158. Now keep in mind that each course is three credits. Uh, so for undergrads, you would need to multiply that number by three and then the same for graduate students. Um, financial aid, of course, we have financial aid counselors here to help you at Tulane. Um, they can help you fill out your FAFSA to get government lending, um, any sort of federal grants, federal loans. And then at SOFA, we also offer the Yellow Ribbon Program. We've also got a 20% du uh, tuition discount for active duty military and veterans, active and retired public now minority serving students who graduated from a minority serving institution and students who are associated with Phi Theta Kappa. Um, there's actually quite a long list of students that might qualify for the 20% tuition discount. So I urge you to reach out to your advisor to get more information there. Um, and then of course, we've also got the six or 24 credit hours for work and life experience. So here's more about the 20% tuition discount. So this is specific to SOFA and this is a really great program. Um, so if you fall into any of the categories listed here, um, please reach out to your advisor and they can help connect you with the application for uh, the discount. That is a form that you'll have to turn in every semester to uh, keep that tuition discount active. Um, so just reach out with any questions there. And this is the full list. You can also find this list online. Applying is very easy, very simple. Uh, since you attended this webinar today, your application fee would be waived. Um, so if you get to a point where you're submitting your application, you still see that fee there, feel free to reach out and let us know, but you should be waived from that from attending today. Um, there is no GRE required for those graduate programs. We've got a 40 or $50 application fee, which again is waived. Um, you do need to upload a clear image of your government ID. And then your transcripts, those need to be sent um, officially to the institution. It's best to send them via PDF if uh, the school that you're requesting from offers that as an option. Uh, it usually comes pretty quickly and it's all handled online, no snail mail waiting on things to arrive. Uh, if you have any questions about that, reach out to your advisor or to admissions and we will help walk you through it. So here are the application deadlines. Um, so for fall, we're looking at August 1st for the application deadline. For spring, that's going to be January 1st. And then for next summer, that would be May 1st. Um, and one thing to keep in mind is we also offer an early enrollment scholarship. This is only valid in the first semester that you enroll in courses. Uh, but as long as you enroll by that specific deadline, you can get $200 towards your first semester of tuition. So credit it towards your first semester of tuition as an undergrad or 500 as a graduate student. So for fall, that you would have needed to be enrolled by June 1, so you have missed that deadline. Uh, for spring, you would need to be enrolled by December 1st. So if you are interested in applying and attending for the spring, plenty of time to get your application in, plenty of time to get that early enrollment scholarship. Any questions? I, I just had a couple of comments before we, we open it up for questions. Um, <clears throat> we do have a LinkedIn page for uh, the program, Emergency and Security Studies. If you look for Tulane SOPA Emergency and Security Studies, we do have a LinkedIn page where we post uh, Put it a in the number chat. of jobs. Okay, thank you. Um, also, we have some outstanding faculty. That's what makes this program so unique and so special. Uh, the the people that will teach you in this program are in the fields for the, the areas that they teach. So if you have somebody teaching you emergency management, they've been in the field for, for decades. And so they know what they're talking about and they want to pass on their lessons learned and, and they give you the theory, but they also show you how that theory is, is put into practice. Uh, so that's very important. Um, and the program itself, uh, we're very well connected with both the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, we're part of their educational uh, alliance of higher, higher ed organizations and also with FEMA. So we have a lot of connections in the field. Uh, we strive to keep those up. Uh, Dr. Rouse and I were out at uh, Northern Command last week uh, for a seminar on Homeland Defense that was held at the Coast, or the, uh, Coast Guard Academy, the Air Force Academy. Uh, 
Um, and so uh, when you look at schools and, and consider schools to attend, you know, you need to make sure that uh, they do have those connections uh, and uh, we strive to keep those, uh, those very current up to date. So with that, we'll open up any questions. And I'd like oh. to add something, of course, too. And I, in fact, I put a question in the chat asking folks, if you don't mind telling us how you heard about Tulane's Emergency and Security Studies program uh, overall, or the programs, specific programs. Um, but I also, as I, as I just mentioned, we did put our LinkedIn uh, link into the chat box if you want to copy it. You're welcome to follow us and almost daily um, our, our very wonderful student Mark is putting in links to job postings at all levels of government and private sector and also internships. So please uh, go ahead and check us out. That supplements the career counselor who does an amazing job as well. Oh, so I see that uh, um, Chadrick Bell, he says he just came back from military deployment and our yellow ribbon ceremony. What is the graduation success rate is the question, Dr. Wallace. What is the graduation success rate? So officially, um, School of Professional Advancement does not keep tabs on that. But I would say for our program, it's upwards of 85% uh, and better. Uh, the students that enter these programs uh, by and large are people that are already in the field um, or they want to get in the field. They're very dedicated. We have a lot of, a lot of veterans, again, a lot of first responders. And so they really um, strive and, and really knock out this program very quickly. Uh, the usual student will take probably six hours or so two classes in the fall and spring, and then they take one in the summer. So with that, you can complete it in a little bit over two calendar years. Um, and so I would say the success rate is, is very high. Sorry, I can't give you a precise uh, number, but um, we have a lot of students that, that uh, when they start the program, we see them finishing in, uh, in two and a half years. And, and, and yet some of them may take four. Somebody like Becky Rouse says, I'm going to have to take my summers off because I'm also working a couple jobs. I've got a family, things like this. So some folks, you are, they're, they're tailoring it at their own pace um, and still completing the program successfully. We also have um, overwhelmingly folks who are working, if, if not in their field, um, then certainly in a field uh, um, that demands plenty of their time and attention or, or just even working from home or, or raising families. So folks have a lot going on. This tells you that you're gonna have really interesting folks in the class with you um, who are become part of your extended network almost immediately. Everything from active FBI you know, uh, uh, agents to um, we had a, the White House fellow recently I had in the class, we had um, uh, folks working right on campus in security. Um, a tremendously great person to know. Um, I, I, here's the next question there, Dr. Wallace et al. Uh, uh, Heather uh, asks, go ahead. Yeah, and, and I also wanted to add to that. Um, if, let's say you're in the military or you're a first responder or just life comes up, um, like I mentioned, our instructors, and I'm an instructor too, Dr. Rouse is an instructor, We've all been in the real world. We know that things come up. So if you do have things come up, we can work with you. Um, it does not mean you have to drop out. We can work with you to make sure that, that you're successful in this program. We want you to be successful in this program. Uh, I tell people that, you know, I want you to be successful because you're the next generation. You're going to be taking care of me and Dr. Rouse and, and other people. So it's in our best interest to make sure that you're the, the best prepared that you can be. Dr. Rouse. What's All right, the great. The next question, Heather tells us she found out from a Facebook ad about our programs. And her question is, is one able to obtain multiple post-grad certificates simultaneously? Uh, Brit Brittany, can you, I think I know the answer, but I, I think Brittany knows the answer, so. Yeah, so you unfortunately cannot be enrolled in two different programs at one time um, while you are a Tulane student. Now, if you have, um, if you are in the master's program, but you're also earning a certificate along the way, that's uh, different because those are two different levels and they stack into each other. 
Um, but unfortunately, we wouldn't be able to code you as a student seeking two different certificates at the same level at the same time. Um, now, that's not to say that you can't, you know, take courses as they're offered and then just apply for those certificates to, you know, to finish that program, to apply to finish that program once you've met all of those courses. Um, but in terms of actually being enrolled in and coded as a student, you can't do more than one grad certificate at one time. And so then, Brittany, Brittany could, could a student be enrolled in two Homeland Security certificates at one time? No, so those are the same level. Yeah, so nothing at the same level. If it was a master's student also doing a grad cert or vice versa, that would be okay. Um, but just because of how the, the back end student coding is in our systems, there's no way to, to have them at the same time. Okay, thank you. Um, Dan Hagelberg uh, tells us he found out about the program from a list posted on FEMA's website. Yeah, that. That pays off for us there, <laughs> Dr. Wallace, and updating that regularly. Thank you, Dan. Um, and the chat tells us that he is Chadrick, I'm sorry. Um, he's a city police in Baton Rouge and has his undergraduate degree from Northwestern State in Natchitoches. Natchitoches. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, Brian Atsley says he found out about this class through Tulane emails. All right. And Heather gave us some thumbs up on our answer. So you, you can, uh, Brittany and, and Dr. Wallace can take that. I don't see any other questions. Does anybody else have one? Cookie, we haven't heard from you. We know you're sitting there with the sound turned off so that at work, any questions from anybody else? We're so, so grateful to have you join us. No, I'm good. <laughs> she hey, is hey, good. Cookie. Nice <laughs> to see you. Um, and if you do have questions, uh, my information is here, Dr. Rouse. Uh, I can also put you in touch with Dr. Rouse. Dr. Rouse is very easy to find also on Tulane's website. Um, and, and Brittany just put up her information. Uh, we, we would love to talk to you uh, about the different career fields, about the program, about applying, anything like that. Um, sometimes people want to talk about, uh, you know, what careers are available. Um, you know, what have we seen in the past and things like that. More than happy to talk with you. And uh, I hope that uh, you know, everyone uh, has a good rest of the day. I'll, I'll turn it over to Dr. Ross, see if she has anything, and then Brittany. I would just like to say one thing. We have heard from folks all over the country who are looking for advice on things in general. So please don't, don't think, well, if I don't sign up for the Tulane programs, I can't reach out to these two people. We love to be leveraged. I'm not allowed to stay exploited anymore in this new political environment. So you feel free to contact us if you want to know about um, career, the career fields, the kind of things we've just touched on a little bit, and we'll be happy to put you in touch with other folks we know. It's a very generous community, Homeland Security and Emergency Management, and we're cost, constantly, you know, coordinating with our peers, um, and we'd love to answer any of your questions. And Chadrick, uh, thank you for your service, and don't be, don't be the slightest bit intimidated in using your GI benefits, because Dr. Wells and I can both help you with that as well, regardless of what you, where you proceed. That's all I have. And uh, Dr. Ross, I'm glad you said that. I do want to add that we do have a dedicated um, um, representative on Tulane's campus that works with students who are using GI benefits. So if you all have any questions about that, you can also contact your advisor. Um, my last piece of advice is just don't be afraid to ask questions, even if you're not sure who the question is for, or if you're asking the right person, that's no big deal. Ask away and we will contact you or get you connected with whoever you do need to talk to. Well, thank you very much, everyone. Again, it was nice to, to uh, virtually meet everyone. I apologize that I had to do this on my phone. And then I had uh, uh, a bunch of emails coming at once. They all appeared on the screen. So, uh, you know, technology is great until it's not. So I appreciate that. Uh, thank you for listening. And again, please reach out, uh, like Dr. Rouse said and, and Brittany. You know, we are not shy about uh, giving you our opinions about things. And we'd love to talk about this field. It's a field that we've been in for a long time. We, we, we believe in strongly. So uh, I hope everyone has a, has a great day. And, uh, and I guess that's it. Take care, everyone.